My name is Bridget Eckert, and I am the Director of Marketing and Communications for the Indiana Arts Commission. And I would like to invite you to um, type your questions that you have as the speakers go on into the chat box. I'm going to ask that everybody that's joining us on Zoom today remain on mute just to give attention to our speakers and presenters. And I'll keep an eye on that chat box for questions. Um, but speaking of the chat box, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and share what you're up to with your peers. Maybe you're using this time um, to create in a different way than what you're used to. We'd love to hear those stories in the chat box. Um, and without further ado, I'm proud to introduce uh, my colleague, our executive director of the Indiana Arts Commission, Louis Rickey. Louis? Bridget, thank you. And welcome to all our participants today on behalf of the commissioners, our commissioners from around the state, as well as our, our governor, Eric Holcomb. Welcome to everyone. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, our homes provide safety and shelter. Uh, that's why the Indiana Housing and Community Development Authority, IHCDA, is providing and gathering resources to keep Hoosiers from being displaced. Um, in this webinar, we'll discuss uh, available housing assistance programs, including mortgage and utility assistance, as well as ways to find help with rent. Um, we'll also run through recent updates about the CARES Act that affects artists, creative businesses, and arts organizations. I'm happy to introduce my friends from the Indiana Housing and Community Development Authority. Those include Tracy, Golden Manager of the Hardest Hit Fund, Emily Krauser, Director of Community Programs, and Jake Seid, Executive Director. Take it away, you guys. All right. Jake, would you like for me to go first or? Yeah, feel free to go ahead, Tracy. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let me get my screen up. <laughs> Share my screen. Try this. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, let me get the sides. Get it started. All right, so good morning, everyone. My name is Tracy, I'm gonna take my video off. My name is Tracy Golden. I'm the field manager for the Hardest Hit Fund Program and the Indiana Foreclosure Prevention Network, or as we like to call it, the IFPN. Um, Today, I'm gonna to discuss what the IFPN is and our hardest hit fund program. So the Indiana Foreclosure Prevention Network was created to assist Indiana homeowners who are struggling to pay their mortgage delinquencies or are in foreclosure. Uh, we, IFPN provides free foreclosure prevention counseling to homeowners in all 92 counties. Our HUD certified housing counselors assist homeowners with understanding their options to avoid foreclosure. In addition to counseling services, counselors can assist applicants with applying for the Hardest Hit Fund program. Indiana is one of 19 states that received money from the U.S. Department of the Treasury to help homeowners avoid losing their homes to foreclosure. Under the Hardest Hit Fund, IHCDA offers reinstatement only assistance and monthly mortgage assistance. Applicants who qualify for reinstatement only assistance have an affordable mortgage but need assistance to bring their mortgage current. Applicants can apply for reinstatement only assistance if they have suffered from one of the following qualifying hardships. Unemployment, underemployment, medical hardship, death of a contributing household member, or divorce. Applicants must meet all eligibility criteria for approval. Upon approval, IFPN will make a one-time payment up to $30,000 to the lender. In response to the financial effects of COVID-19, IHCDA reinstituted its monthly mortgage assistance program. This assistance is made available to homeowners who have experienced an involuntary financial related hardship on or after January 1 of 2020. Under the monthly assistance program, IHEDA will provide up to six months of mortgage assistance or $30,000, whichever comes first. Applicants do not have to be behind on their, mark, on their mortgage. 
ICDA will, however, pay the delinquency if there is one in up to six months of assistance. Homeowners must either have received unemployment benefits or are currently receiving benefits to qualify for this assistance. If an applicant does not qualify for you for unemployment insurance, they must provide documentation supporting the involuntary hardship. IHCDA will not help homeowners with an active forbearance. Now they can come back after the forbearance is over and at that time apply for monthly assistance. And they must meet all eligibility criteria. All applicants must meet basic criteria if they wish to apply for HHF. They must be an Indiana homeowner, own only one home, and they must reside in the home. If a homeowner applies for monthly assistance, the mortgage must be unaffordable as a result of an involuntary employment-related financial hardship. That's the monthly assistance. Homeowners who receive reinstatement assistance must document their ability to pay the mortgage payment after reinstatement. Additional criteria are listed on our website. Homeowners are encouraged to apply for HHF as soon as they experience an involuntary employment related financial hardship. Homeowners can apply by visiting www.877gethope.org. The online application consists of four steps. One, basic information. Two, lender and property information. Three, financial information, and lastly, a description of the hardship. Once the homeowner completes the application, they are assigned to a counseling agency. Um, that pretty much concludes HHF and IFPN. Um, I'll open it up to questions. I wanna be fair too, to the time allotted to us. So just a brief presentation, but I will take questions at this time. Um, if you all don't have any, um, feel free to visit our website at www.877gethope.org. And now I'm going to ask you, Bridget, how do I get to the questions? Yeah, there so, questions. Yeah, so far, um, there aren't any questions in the yeah. chat box, but um, I'll ask a question on behalf okay. of the field. So in order to um, access or apply for the hardest hit fund, um, either of those two opportunities that you mentioned that fall within it, mm -hmm. do people need to talk to their lender about that or do they go straight to IHCDA? No, you go straight to our website, www.877gethope.org. And from there, the housing counseling um, agency uh, that the homeowner is assigned to, they'll walk them and walk through that with them. And if they need to apply with their lender for a home retention option, at that time, the counselor will sit down. So we pretty much hold their hand throughout the entire process. Awesome. Um, we do have a question coming in. Can nonprofits sign up for this kind of assistance on mortgages that they have for their, um, their buildings? No, this is just uh, for Indiana homeowners. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. I think we're ready to move on to the next topic. Emily, was that you? Sorry, I unmuted, but then it muted me back again. It's okay. Technology. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Emily Krauser. I'm Director of Programs at IHCDA. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about the Energy Assistance Program. Um, so I want to start by saying that the programs that um, we run out of my department, we run with a um, partnership of 24 different sub-grantees around the state, so lo local service providers. So um, as I'm talking, uh, just remember that the, the connection point is going to be a local service provider. Um, in your local area and our service providers do cover all 92 counties so you do have one um, i'm going to share my screen real quick here um, and start by sharing with you um, a website that provides um, a list of all of those local service providers so you can see here is the um, the url incap.org slash energy info. Um, so this is about the energy assistance program, but you can see down here, 
Um, each county has a local service provider that is the main point of contact for this program in that county. So the Energy Assistance Program is a program that is specific to help pay utility bills for individuals who are at 60% of the area median income or below. So I'm going to pull up here those income limits for by household size um, because I know people are used to looking at federal poverty level and not necessarily um, area median income. And if any of you are on the phone and don't have access to see what I'm pulling up here, um, just as a, a benchmark here for a household of three, the income limit is just over $40,000 uh, annually. Um, so you qualify if uh, you're within those income limits and are having trouble paying your utility bill. Um, what happens is you go through the application process um, and then you get approved for a certain amount. The amount that you'd be approved for does depend on things like what your energy source is. So if you're using uh, bulk fuel, uh, electric, gas, those all go into an equation to determine the benefit amount. And then those payments are made directly to your utility uh, vendor in all cases where that is possible. This is a program that's available for individuals who uh, pay for rent in their, or pay for utilities in their rent. Um, we know that that can be difficult because you're not directly paying that utility vendor. And in that case, we do pay the individual directly. Um, but in all cases where it's possible, we do pay the utility vendor directly. All right, uh, the other thing to know about this program is that um, there is an online application. So here I am on the page for it um, at IHCDA. So it's in.gov slash IHCDA slash 4067. Um, and if you're looking at this page, there is something right here that says you may also now apply online by clicking here. You click there, it'll take you to an online application. Um, you'll just have to create um, a client username and uh, complete your application there. And then that application will go directly to the local service provider um, and they will work with you to make sure any outstanding information is in and then to um, provide that benefit. And that is, that's really the crux of it. It works for um, all different energy types. And uh, this program is open uh, through July 31 right now. And then the new program year starts up um, towards the end of this calendar year. So around October-ish. Um, we'll have more information about that later in the year but this is available through July 31st right now, and then we'll see what happens with the new federal funding to see if that needs to extend. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. Does anybody have questions about that program? I have a few questions about the program. Are you seeing a significant uptick in uh, requests? Um, we are not yet seeing a huge uptick in requests, but we do anticipate seeing that. Um, we were provided funding through the CARES Act. It was about one quarter of the funding that the program would normally see in a year, so it's not a gigantic amount, even though the numbers are big. Um, and so there is some talk about additional funding coming through future acts, um, because we do anticipate, maybe not immediately, but as folks are um, kind of through the first few steps, the unemployment, getting unemployment, um, things like that, then then this will be kind of that next wave. Kind of the next wave, I see. Yeah. And what, how long does it take between, from the time that they apply and through even just the online portal to when a payment would be made to a utility, just kind of on, on average, I know there's unique search situations. There are unique situations. It does take a, a minute. It does have to go through the local service provider um, and then through HCDA and then through the system at um, the utility company. And I would say about a month. Okay. And then do you guys negotiate like late fees or how does that work? Is, is that handled as well? Um, so there is something called a crisis benefit that if you're in disconnect, um, it can help get out of disconnect. I know utility companies, and this is actually an important point. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, 
utility companies in the state right now are on what's called moratorium, which means they cannot disconnect you due to um, right. not paying for your utilities. That does not mean that those bills aren't going to come due as soon as moratorium is um, has ended. And so if you're in that situation, please pay your utility bills um, if at all possible, because those will rack up over this time of moratorium and they will cut you off as soon as moratorium is over. Um, and there are two things about that. One is that if you are in disconnect, this program can provide some crisis benefit. It may not cover the entire amount, um, but also call your utility company and see if you can work out a payment plan because many of them are off, um, offering to do so. Do, do, do people find them to be receptive to working with them individually? Um, it depends on the company and there are you know, hundreds across the state. Um, I know some of the larger ones are looking to work with individuals. Um, we've had some good conversations with the big five in the state. Um, so sometimes. Great. I just have one last question. I feel like I'm just hogging all the bandwidth, so apologies for that. Um, when it comes to, in looking at what you presented, and thank you so much for doing that for us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, I see that there's the income restrictions, and I can only assume that the income is based upon perhaps the most recent tax IRS form. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned something about the, uh, the, the, the income, but then there was or qualifying in other areas. Could you explain both of those a little bit? Sure. Um, one of the things to know is that the income is based off of the past three months worth of paychecks. So we qualify based on the past ah, okay, three months. Okay, good. Um, which, which helps that out a little bit. Um, if you're in a drastic loss of income situation, that's the terminology that this program uses, by all means, um, see if you can qualify through the drastic loss of income, which means you have to have, um, the household needs to have lost um, a drastic amount of income and right. that uh, there are some additional qualifying um, procedures that the local service provider can go through with that. Okay, great. So it sounds like if, if that's happened, um, they should, is there sort of, sort of some advice that you want to give people today um, that through your experience, you're like, oh, I wish I would have known that sooner, or maybe nothing comes to mind, I'm just chucking it out there just in case? Um, I will say one thing that's important to know is that the stimulus check does not count towards qualifying income because ah. of the tax credit, um, but the unemployment does. Mm -hmm. Um, and right now, um, it's, you have to share your unemployment letter to see what that is. And so your unemployment would have to fall behind below those limits. Okay, great. And based upon kind of what's happened, when do you anticipate that you're going to see that kind of increase? And the only reason I ask is we'll, we'll want to be in concert to help get information out to our constituents so that they know this is available. Are you thinking like we should really amp that up in a couple weeks or? Yeah, so we are, the CARES Act funding is coming through the state, hopefully in the next week or two. Okay. Um, and it will take a couple of weeks for us to turn that around back out to our local service providers. Um, and so that new funding will, they are taking applications that may be covered by that new funding, um, even now. Um, but that new funding, the local service providers won't see it until um, a little bit later. So by all means, go ahead and apply. Um, it might take a little bit more time just because that fund, um, it, it's a program where we, we often run out of program uh, funds by the end of the year because uh, yeah. it's well yeah. used and very helpful. So I wondered about that. Get your application's in. Okay. Get it in. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that, Emily. It's really helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Emily. Really appreciate it. Um, we had a question come in and um, I know uh, your focus is obviously on housing, um, but along with that goes um, internet access. And I was curious um, if you had any advice for people who are struggling with um, getting good broadband right now. Mm. Um, we know that internet was one of the services that was covered under moratorium. So if you are having problems paying for your internet service, they should not kick you off due to non-payment. Um, I also know that there are quite a few cell providers that have a COVID-19 response fund that will allow you to um, 
like create a Wi-Fi hotspot uh, in your home off of that cell phone service, but I don't have any broad, broad program-based um, advice for that. Great. I think that's Can great. I ask one question? I'm sorry. Can I ask one question? This is Clara Davis. Um, is there funding now, um, you know, for this assistance for utilities? And also, if a person is over income and, you know, can you base it off of, say, they got a lot of bills or they had emergency happen, car repairs, housing? That's the other question. Sure. Um, yes, there is funding available now. Uh, the some, all of the local service providers have current 2020 funding. They'll just have additional supplemental funding coming in um, sometime in the next month or so. Um, so yes, there is some funding now. Uh, if other sources of bills do not count towards the um, income calculation, so an emergency medical expense or something like that um, would not be taken into account. Mm. Interesting. Okay, thank you. I'd like to remind everyone to please remain on mute. And if you have a question to type it into the chat box. I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Jake to talk about the resource guide that is on IHCDA's website. Okay, thank you. Um, let me share with you the uh, res our uh, eviction and foreclosure prevention guide that we have uh, created. So let me uh, bring this up real quick. Um, we are receiving a lot of questions um, related to mortgages and um, and for the monthly uh, rents uh, that folks are um, obligated to pay each month as part of your housing cost. And uh, with the uh, governor's executive order 2008, I believe it was, um, we were required to partner with the Indiana Department of Financial Institutions to promote housing stability. And um, one of the things that came out of that was the creation of this coronavirus eviction and foreclosure prevention guide. And it was uh, in collaboration with the Indiana Bankers Association, the Indiana Mortgage Association, the Indiana Credit Union League, and the Indiana Apartment Association. And um, so what we try to do here is really help you as a renter or a homeowner um, go through this process to ensure uh, under the moratorium of evictions and uh, foreclosures um, that you are engaging with your either your your uh, landlord, your property manager uh, as a renter, or with your uh, mortgage service provider. And, and really, this is really designed to be a tool to help you go through that process in terms of asking questions and, and engaging um, to ensure that um, after we come out of the uh, moratorium, once that's lifted, um, that um, the eviction process or the foreclosure process doesn't continue. And a lot of that is really just having conversations and working out um, payment options um, to the best you can during this time. And so um, that's what this was designed to do. Um, and so as you can see, you can click on uh, what to do if I'm unable to pay my rent or mortgage and we help you answer some of these questions uh, that are very common to uh, um, renters and homeowners. Um, at the bottom here, there is a, um, uh, there's some resources that are available for you. Um, so I mean, so I was gonna find one here that we have um, some of our other, one of the most questions is, um, you know, wh what kind of resources are available? Um, Section 8 is obviously one that you can, that a lot of folks re rely on. Um, we even have one here about self-isolation. Um, you know, um, if you have to move during the pandemic, uh, what is that like? And, and some of the things here. So uh, where do I get more information? This piece right here really opens up some more information. Um, the Attorney General's office has a website dedicated uh, if you are unlawfully um, receiving eviction or foreclosure notices or procedures, you can click on that website there. It takes you so you can file a claim there. Um, we have the executive order 211. Uh, one, we've talked about the uh, hardest tip fund today. Um, we have the township trustees. One resource here that's really valuable is the indianahousingnow.org website. 
It also goes into a lot more detail. Um, it also allows uh, landlords and, and properties to post their vacancies online there. So this is a really nice website that's created through IHCDA. Uh, it, there's also another resource guide that goes into a little bit more information on um, potential assistance, when it, whether it's uh, primarily rental assistance, because that seems to be one of the bigger questions we're getting right now is related to rent. Um, we do have the uh, foreclosure prevention, which is the um, 877 Get Hope, but uh, renters are, there's a lot of questions around that. Let me share with you our other website that we've created, and I, hopefully you can see this here. Um, it's our COVID-19 uh, resources page that we've created. Uh, you see there's a direct link to the foreclosure prevention network that Tracy was mentioning. Um, here's the uh, foreclosure prevention guide that's here. Um, as you go into this, uh, there's more additional information related to IHCDA's updates that are more programmatic in our operations. Um, IHCDA's board of directors authorized me with some delegated authority to quickly move with some of our programs. And, and those programs specifically, as uh, Emily was mentioned, related to the CARES Act, which is the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, Economic, and Security Act. Um, if you click on that, um, you'll see the resources that are coming to the state of Indiana related to housing and community development authority. And, and the reason why I bring this up is um, I think it's important to understand what resources are becoming available. Um, we're aware of about seven uh, programs that will be receiving additional resources. Emily in the energy assistance program. Um, we don't know exactly today the exact dollar amount and if there's any other type of program guidance. Uh, the three programs that we are aware of that are receiving additional money uh, are the Community Development Block Grant, which is administered by the Office of Community Rural Affairs, ESG, which is your Emergency Solutions Grant, and it is primarily designed to provide rapid rehousing. Uh, it has traditionally been used to target our homeless population. However, under the CARES Act, um, there might be some greater flexibility uh, related to providing rental assistance. Uh, we're just waiting for some final guidance on that from HUD. And then the HOPWA is housing opportunities for persons with AIDS, and the, um, those dollars are coming as well. Uh, you'll see here on the left side, the community, some of these communities are receiving direct allocations with some of these programs. And uh, so we, I, I, CDA will be serving the balance of the state is what we like to call it. So as you can see under ESG, Evansville, Fort Wayne, Gary will be receiving a direct allocation of ESG. Um, and as you go scroll down here, you can see the other communities, Hammond, Indianapolis, and then uh, South Bend, and then IHCDA, this non-entitlement would be IHCDA, and we'll be administering about 13.5 million of ESG. And you can see the HOPWA dollars as well. Uh, we are aware of additional uh, programs. We just haven't posted them up here yet because uh, we don't know the dollar amount. Uh, so there are a couple other programs like the Housing Choice Vouchers, which is a rental assistance program. We are anticipating some additional dollars coming our way with that program. Uh, there's also some rental assistance designed specifically for persons with disabilities that will be uh, receiving additional dollars. Uh, I should point out that all of these additional dollars are going towards existing programs. So there's no new programs being created. They're all existing programs uh, currently under the CARES Act. So that's, uh, as Emily was mentioning, we are expecting some guidance and some final numbers here the first week of May. That's what HUD uh, and, and the, uh, our federal partners are informing us is that the first week of May, we should receive some additional guidance and some firm numbers so that we can begin to implement um, an allocation uh, policy uh, for our local service agency so they can begin to um, identify residents who can benefit from these programs. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, this page is, uh, is really designed to be resource and up to date on our programs. As you can see here, we try to give a brief description of some of the, of the uh, CARES Act programs up there. So um, those are the, the two resources that we've created uh, for uh, not only IHCDA's not-for-profit partners, but we've also tried to balance also related to our consumers 
uh, who are in need of some type of, whether it be housing assistance, energy assistance, or programs that we currently administer. So I'll stop right there and happy to answer any questions. I am going to uh, put the link, let me post in the chat room here. Uh, right there's your uh, foreclosure prevention guide uh, website uh, for you. You can click on that, that'll take you directly to the, uh, the uh, prevention guide. So happy to answer any questions if I can. I also wanna point out, I wanna thank Emily and Tracy. They have just been outstanding in uh, delivering this information across the state and also ensuring that our programs were, were modified to adjust to uh, what we're all going through. Um, HHF program, uh, you know, we made significant changes to that program to provide the mortgage assistance um, that you're seeing now for up to six months. That wasn't in place um, in March, uh, but working closely with the U.S. Department of Treasury, Tracy and Mark Nealon did just outstanding work, and I think I'm just really proud of being able to work alongside them to adapt to the changing conditions that we had uh, with uh, Hoosiers in terms of preserving their homes. Um, same way with our energy assistance program. I know Emily and her team have just been outstanding and in, in, in working alongside our program partners to ensure that we can deliver these dollars and, and provide this assistance efficiently as quickly as we can. So uh, I'll stop right there. Thank you so much, Jake. That was so helpful. We do have a couple of questions that have popped up in the chat, mostly relating to um, folks that are renting their housing at this time. Um, can you be evicted right now, or um, if your um, if your lease is up, um, do you still need to leave the premises, or um, does your landlord have the right to to do that right now? Right, I think you know um, those are legal questions that I'm just not in a position to answer. Uh, I would uh, under the resource or the uh, foreclosure prevention guide there, eviction guide. Um, Indiana Legal Services is a great resource there to contact and also um, informing the Attorney General's office that, uh, if there is that, that process has begun or if you're receiving information related to that, I would uh, defer them to the Indiana Attorney General's office or the Indiana Legal Services is another great resource uh, to use. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just not in a position where I can offer legal advice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and a follow-up question about um, the CARES Act and relief related to rent. Can you go over again what is being put on the table in regards to the CARES Act and renting assistance um, sure. and how many um, months that will extend for? No, great questions. Uh, the, the programs that we're currently aware of that are receiving additional dollars is the Emergency Solutions Grant, ESG, and HOPWA, Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS. Those two programs, as I pointed out, have the actual dollars amount. So we do know how much dollars we're getting for those two programs. The other programs are for persons with disabilities, it's called 811, um, and those dollars uh, we don't know yet, um, and we're waiting for guidance. And um, our Housing Choice Vouchers, which is primarily, folks refer to it as Section 8, um, and those dollars are coming as well. Uh, so those are the other two rental assistance programs that we do know are getting additional dollars. We just don't know how much yet. And uh, for all those programs yet, we still don't know what the um, priorities are in terms of how HUD would like for us to um, allocate those resources. Uh, in Indiana, we partner with local service agencies, which are primarily not-for-profit organizations like a community action agency. Um, and um, so we're just waiting on some final guidance so that we can begin to implement that and, and know exactly how much dollars we're, we have. Um, but those are your, the, the primary, the, the four that we are aware of. We have emergency solutions, housing opportunities with AIDS, uh, persons with disabilities, and our housing choice vouchers. So those are the four that we know are getting additional resources soon. Fantastic. And I will say IHCDA provides great resources, not only on their website, but through email. And um, I will be sharing out how to subscribe to their email updates in the follow-up to this so everybody can stay up to date as, as they implement or um, receive word about um, how, to, how to implement some more of this funding. Okay. I'm looking for additional questions in the chat and I'm not seeing any. So um, at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and ask that, that our IHCDA folks stay on the line in case a chat pops up before the end here, but I'm gonna pivot a little bit to um, 
to talking about some other um, federal programs that I think are probably on everyone's mind right now. So um, I'd like to switch it to talking about the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, as you all may have seen, the Small Business Administration has begun resuming accepting Paycheck Protection Program applications um, from, from participating lenders starting today at 10.30 a.m. So right now, um, the Paycheck Protection Program is a loan designed to provide a direct incentive for small businesses to keep their workers on payroll. Um, and these loans will be forgiven if all employees are kept on payroll for eight weeks and the money is used for payroll, rent, mortgage interest, or utilities. Um, you should consult with your local lender as to whether um, or not you should be uh, particip participating in this program, um, I advise all nonprofits in Indiana to check that out um, and see, see if you could be eligible. Um, it is worth noting that if you were denied payroll protection or paycheck protection um, assistance in the first round because you were ineligible, then you cannot reapply. Um, if you're self-employed, you can apply for a uh, paycheck protection program. Um, if this applies to you, please be sure again to reach out to your lender. The um, Small Business Administration has a lot of great resources on their website and we'll be sharing those as well. Um, and I see a question in the chat about if you can get copies of the slides after this presentation. Yes, absolutely. We will be sharing those. Um, and I'd like to now turn it over to my colleague, Anna, to talk about pandemic unemployment assistance. Anna? Hi, everyone. My name is Anna Tragester. I am the Artist and Community Services Manager at the Indiana Arts Commission. So. Um, I do not work for the Department of Workforce Development, um, but I have gathered a few highlights um, about the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program so that you can get started on this. So, as you probably know, uh, you've heard that the CARES Act expanded unemployment benefits in a way that now includes self-employed and gig economy workers. If you're a creative, then that's probably you. It also extended the amount of time that you can receive unemployment payments and provides an additional $600 per week for 13 weeks. If you're a working creative, then you're probably eligible for unemployment benefits under the CARES Act and you should apply. Applying for unemployment is so far the best relief option for artists and creatives. I cannot stress this enough. News on this, apply for unemployment. If you are not able to work because of COVID-19, and you don't have the ability to telework with pay, or if you're not receiving paid sick leave or other paid leave benefits, then you're probably eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance, or as it's called PUA. You can receive benefits for a total of 39 weeks um, that you were or are unable to work between February and December of 2020. If you're currently unable to work because of COVID-19, apply now. If you are currently able to work, but you think that will change soon, apply as soon as you're unable to work. So I'm gonna to go to um, unemployment.in.gov. That is the Department of Workforce Development um, unemployment landing page. The first thing that you should know about this is that the Indiana Department of Workforce Development is working incredibly hard to process an unimaginable increase in applications and they're creating a new system from scratch to be able to deliver you these benefits. So please be patient, but stay vigilant. Keep checking this website and your uh, uplink dashboard, which is the portal that you apply for unemployment uplink. Uh, before you try to call with a question, check out the claimant handbook on this webpage or this wonderful frequently asked questions document for information. So um, if you to receive PUA benefits, you first have to apply for standard unemployment benefits and be denied. So you apply, um, you can, let's see, let's just explore this a little bit here. Um, you can, this walks you through a really helpful process for applying. Um, you apply through this uplink portal, you can see here. Be honest in your application. Everything that you report on your application will determine the amount that you're eligible to receive per week 
including if you are eligible to receive that additional $600 per week by the CARES Act. So you don't need to do anything additional to apply for that additional $600 per week. Like regular unemployment benefits, you will need to file a voucher every week, which is how you report any income that you received that week. And any, you know, receiving income during a given week doesn't necessarily make you ineligible for PUA benefits, but it is very important that you stay on top of those vouchers. So this is new. As of Friday, the 24th, just this past Friday, pandemic unemployment assistance applications became available in the Department of Workforce Development's application portal. If you have applied for unemployment and you were denied, you should log in and check to see if that application is now available. After you submit the PUA application, it's gonna take a few weeks for what's called a monetary determination to come through and a DWD, Department of Workforce Development, a claims investigator might reach out to you for additional information. Don't be worried about that. There's lots of information that will probably feel confusing to you as a self-employed person. And, um, and like I said, they're building the system up from scratch, but there's been some additional information in this uh, frequently asked questions document that's really useful for pandemic unemployment assistance. So I'm gonna jump down here, including how to list yourself as your own employer. So um, these payments will begin in May, but the bottom line is that if you're unable to work as a creative, you should be applying for this. Be honest in your application, and I will we'll repeat it again, this is the best relief option available to individual creatives at this time. So all this information I found on the Department of Workforce Development website. So if you, this is the first time you've thought about applying for unemployment, again, go to uh, unemployment.in.gov and uh, start now, apply as soon as you're unable to work so that these benefits can reach you in a timely manner. That's all I have to share. Um, again, if you have questions, check out that, the claimant handbook or the FAQ document. Thank you so much for sharing that information, Anna. I think it's so helpful and useful. And um, like Anna said, if, if you're an artist right now unable to work, this is your, your um, opportunity for some relief. So please be taking advantage of that um, and get the help that's out there. I'd like to go ahead and um, open it up for some more questions in the chat. Um, again, remembering that our folks from IHCDA are are not legal experts and, and you should um, reach out to your, your legal counsel um, for questions about, um, specific questions about eviction and, and lease terms ending and things like that. But if you have any questions about the programs that they are administering, please pop those in the chat box um, and we will stay on for a few more minutes uh, for questions to roll in. We do have a question about Section 8. Um, how long are the waiting lists for Section 8? Jake, Emily, or Tracy, are you still on? Yes, I'm here. Jake, Emily, I think that's more of a question for one of them. Oh, we can't hear you, Emily, you're on mute. Hi. Um, yeah, this is one, um, Section 8 isn't in my department, so I'm not sure exactly what the waitlist looks like on that. Okay. If you all need an answer, I can always ask the um, program manager for that program and get back to you via email um, if you want to send that out along with everything else. Sure, that would be great. Um, we do have another question. Uh, for folks that don't have great internet access, is there a phone number that um, people can call to contact IHCDA and in inquire about resources? 
So if you're looking for resources, I'd recommend calling 211. Um, it's a, they will be able to link you to a wider swath of resources than IHCDA will um, and more tailored to you. Um, there is a phone number for IHCDA. Honestly, most of the time you're gonna be better connecting with your local community action agency because they run such um, a large proportion of these programs. Um, except for some of the ones that are foreclosure prevention, not foreclosure prevention, um, uh, trying to keep people in their homes before they default. Um, some of those are run through homeless shelters. So your, your local homeless service provider. Um, usually the community action agency at the local uh, level is working in partnership with them anyway. So that's really a, a good first place to go is that local community action agency. Um, and that's usually in their name. So if you type like your uh, either uh, Google or something, the list that I provided earlier or community action agency in your county, um, that's a really good place to go to start. But by all means, call IHCDA if you'd like. There is a, a main line that I'll look up the number for you right now. Fantastic. Thank you, Emily. Um, but it sounds like call 211, yes? Yes, absolutely. All right. Call Bridget. I will put the number for Indiana Foreclosure Prevention. I'll put that in the chat. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Okay. I see some questions still about Section 8, and we'll be sure to get with the right folks at IHCDA to um, get that information. So Emily and Tracy will be contacting their colleagues, and that will go out in the follow-up um, information. Um, is there, we have one more question before we hop off. Is there a maximum limit on assets besides um, income for eligibility for these programs or are you only looking at income? Um, for the energy assistance program, there is not an asset test. Okay. Um, for monthly assistance and reinstatement, uh, we just ask that you have no more than nine months of principal and interest, tax and insurance payments in your bank account. So I think the max household income limit is 150,000 per year. Um, so that's pretty much where we start, start out at and most qualify for our program. Great, thank you so much for answering all these questions, you guys, really appreciate it. Um, and thank you to everyone who joined us today. Um, I'm so thankful for our friends at IHCDA, Tracy, Emily, and Jake. You've been so helpful to the arts community. Um, we will be including resources that were discussed in this webinar, including the slide decks, the unemployment information that Anna shared. All of that will be coming in a follow-up email to those who registered uh, for this webinar, including an, an invitation to join one of our upcoming online conversations. This next one will be on Wednesday this week, and we'll be talking about mental health and ways to cope with stress and anxiety during this really unusual time. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Thanks, Bridget. Thanks, Thank everybody. you.